Hey everyone, how's it going? It's Kevin here from lp24audio.com and today we have a video for you. It's on resampling within Serum and resampling is a technique that's been done for very many years. It's the ability to say create a sound, render it to audio, and then reinsert that audio clip or region into a sampler so you can play it up and down the keyboard and transpose in pitch like most samplers will do by default. Now resampling in the context of Serum is slightly different except it follows a similar principle and that is you make a sound in Serum and then it resamples it into, here's where it's different, into your wavetable oscillator. So when you switch the wavetable positioning, you're actually scanning through the sample. Um, in some ways, this is akin to granular style synthesis. Although granular, you have a little bit more control over each moment in the position. For example, in granular, you could have control over the time it takes to get through each position slash its transposition slash many other variables that's usually part of it. Um, but it is similar in that we are scanning through what essentially would be an audio file and that's where wavetable and granular kind of meet up. So hopefully you get some use uh, out of this. It's a very creative technique and I absolutely love it because I think it's a way of exploring sound design in a somewhat um, more advanced fashion. So let's try something out here. For example, if I have two sawtooth waves, maybe one slightly detuned, and then I put, say, an LFO on the filter. Okay, what's gonna happen here is when I click menu, resample to oscillator B, A, or B, or resample to A plus B, Let's start with just A. What happens is it takes this movement, the LFO on the cutoff frequency. It also considers this movement, which is these oscillators will be slightly out of tune, therefore occasionally go out of phase and cause a little bit of uh, harmonic subtleties uh, in, in, throughout time. So let's go try this. Let's resample to oscillator A. Just for clarity's sake, I'll turn these off. I'll disable the LSO, LFO. And here we have it. It updates once you um, click on it. Otherwise, it shows the previous waveform. So what do we have here? We have a cool looking sawtooth wave that kind of evolves in its uh, period and its shape. For example, this looks like a couple sawtooth waves. You know, almost as if you went to the sink function and you fit two saw waves into one. For example, here's one saw wave fit now into two, three. It repeats the waveform in the same time frame. So check this out. Let's have a listen. Okay, I didn't really hear the filter movement. Let me double check that. Okay, we're gonna resample this to B. So in other words, I'm kind of passing it along over to B. Let's try that out and turn the filter off. Okay, see that time I heard it, I'm not sure what I missed on the first time, but it's good to kind of see the troubleshooting process as well. It's good to see the troubleshooting process as well. Um, so you can see that when we get movement in our waveform, because there's movement with an LFO or say an envelope or two oscillators going in and out of phase, which we actually heard better on this first one, hear the kind of flanging process there. That's when the oscillators are slightly in and out of phase, and it seems like they're slightly delayed, therefore flanged. You can kind of see the second saw wave catching up to the phase of the first one. 
Um, this can be really, really useful even with effects. I mean, let's say we want to distort the sound, maybe add some other movements to it, like a phaser. You know, we can experiment with different settings, maybe even compress it so it seems louder or more tamed, or you can multiband compress it to get some kind of edge out of it. You could even EQ some harmonics or fundamental up or something like that. So there we have a little bit more mid-range. So check this out. We can go right here and go, let's do the third option. Let's resample to A plus. In fact, I'm going to do that with a couple other things. I have, I've changed my mind. A plus B. So let's add some chorus, which will widen, and some reverb, which somewhat widens and adds depth. Now if you add more spin, it adds uh, width also. So let's see. Okay, there's a lot of movement you can see in the meters, even seems like it's panning, but what's actually happening is the phase is going in and out on both the left and right because they have different delay times. Um, the reverb, just a touch. Now, the reason I'm doing that kind of effect spatially is because when you go to menu, resample to A plus B stereo, it takes stereo information and it places it in oscillator E for the left A for the left channel and oscillator B for the right channel. So let's try that. Okay. Word of caution, um, just or you know, just for your information, when you resample, everything that you've left in the sound design space is still applied again, let's say. It's applied again. So in other words, it's applied to the wavetable, but it's being applied again unless you go and turn it all off, which I'm going to do right now. So it's as if I'm not processing it, but my wavetable contains the processed information. Uh, just for the same effect, watch this. We can pan one left, one right. So now we have a truly stereo uh, kind of scenario with two wavetables, one on each side. If I use an LFO, as we do very commonly, on the wavetable position, and I hit a note. Okay, you hear that? It sounds quite similar. I mean, I definitely hear the chorus. I hear a slight bit of the reverb. I hear all that movement that we had in there. So getting your LFO rate right, um, maybe setting it up with uh, different shapes would be handy, like holding shift and clicking to get these kind of pattern blocks, changing your grid size and trying different shapes. Okay. Notice the diagonal sounds like it's moving and you've applied an effect, whereas the kind of horizontal and quick vertical drops seem like you're frozen in time there. Which is why, again, it's akin to a granular scenario. Because granular, you can scan through at different speeds um, and change different properties. So we're getting as close as we can to that in Serum. But it's an amazing feat, really, that we can have two waveforms that are just really a stereo rendition of what you've done. And see how they're very slightly different. This one seems to have an extra, what, N shape here, cursive M, N. So, lots of possibilities. I've scratched the surface for you. I'm going to leave it to you and let you explore some of the great, unique things we can do in there. Hopefully, you have a good foundation of how this works. So, thanks again for watching. Really appreciate your time. If you like us, uh, you know, subscribe, leave a comment, and don't forget to check out lp24audio.com. Take care. Have a good day.